Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at equivalent expressions with negatives. Basically, we're going to change equations to make them look a little bit easier and help us deal with those nasty negatives. Let's do this. We're going to talk about the commutative property, and then we're going to use that commutative property to actually make equivalent expressions. So hang with me during that first part, and you'll see why we went through it when we get to the second part. First off, we want to do a quick review about simplifying negatives. So how would I rewrite this 54 plus negative 37 to make the expression more simple? This is from a previous lesson, so try that one out. 3, 2, 1, go! Boom! 54 minus 37. So adding a negative is the same as subtracting. That's an important thing that we will come back to in just a little bit. All right, now we're going to talk about commutative property. This is the property of moving things around or commuting them. Let's watch that again. Whee! When you're adding numbers, you can move the numbers around. For example, 4 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 4. So this is one reason why we change expressions into addition expressions, because then we can move them around. It works with negatives as well. I can say 4 plus negative 3 is equal to negative 3 plus 4. You cannot do this with subtraction. You can't say 5 minus 2 is equal to 2 minus 5. It doesn't work with subtraction. That's why we need to be able to change expressions into addition so that we can move them around a little bit. All right. Also, one thing to remember, um, as noted down here, when we do have 4 plus negative 3 is equal to negative 3 plus 4, that negative sign does go with the number. That's important. All right, so I want you to try this one out. Negative 3 plus 2, and go ahead and tell me which one of these would fit as being equivalent. 3, 2, 1, try it out. Boom. 2 plus negative 3 would definitely work out right? See how with this one we've switched them for that negative 3 being out front to being the negative 3 at the end. So we are going to make equivalent expressions using that commutative property and then we're going to manipulate those expressions using the rules of addition. So this is our two-step process that will make these expressions a little bit easier to deal with. So if I have something like this, negative 6 plus 15, that might look like a challenging question. So step number one is that I am going to use the commutative property to change this into being 15 plus negative 6. Then I'm going to simplify this to being just 6, 15 minus 6. So when we first saw this as negative 6 plus 15, we might have said, ooh, that's complicated. But then when we see it as 15 minus 6, that makes it pretty easy. And that's why we do these steps. So we can take an expression and make it look easier, even though it's the same exact expression. We haven't changed the value of it. All we've done is change the order of some numbers and use those rules. So I want you to try this one out. Negative 17 plus 59. Go ahead and show me what would that be as a simplified expression. 3, 2, 1, go. First off, it could be this. You could have written 59 plus negative 17, and that would be absolutely correct. You could also write 59 minus 17 if we're simplifying it down. So it's actually both of these answers are correct. Because it sometimes takes two steps. All right, I want you to try this one out. Negative 18 plus 27. Try simplifying that expression and then come back and I'll go through my solution for it. Go. All right, we would switch it to 27 plus negative 18, and that would be 27 minus 18 as well. And there we have it. Now we're going to talk about decimals with making equivalent expressions using the same rules, we could have a question like this, negative 2.4 minus 5.6. Same exact rules apply, only with the decimal. So we could change this to being negative 2.4 plus negative 5.6, and then you see that um, negative became plus, or then minus became a plus negative. 
or we could move the numbers to being negative 5.6 plus negative 2.4 all of these are equivalent expressions. With this case, we're adding two negatives, so putting them in one order versus another order doesn't necessarily make it any easier. But at this point, if you know your rules for adding negatives, you add those two numbers together and keep the sign, right? But we didn't ask you to actually solve this one in this question. We've just asked you to make an equivalent expression. So those are the two equivalent expressions you could have made, changing it from subtraction to addition. Let's say we get one with fractions. One half plus negative two thirds. How would you rewrite that one? Try it out. The rules are exactly the same. We can change it from adding a negative to just subtracting. One half minus two thirds. Right? These rules work with decimals, they work with fractions, they work with um, integers of all kinds. So they're basically universal rules. A couple things to keep in mind. First off, adding the opposite is the same as subtracting. Those are, that's the rule of addition and subtraction and negatives that helps us simplify some of those expressions. And also learn the rules and use the rules. If you know the rules, then you can start seeing where they become useful. Also, if you start practicing with the rules, it will become more obvious when is a good time to use it and when's a good time to not use it. So, I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.